Hey, hey. All right, guys, we're going to finish or hopefully finish the chapter called Date Night. So um, when we left off, Julian and Amelia were trying to figure out what he was going to wear and what he was going to dress like. So let's keep going. Then she squinted her eyes like she was deciding whether I stink. Well, I said, not bad. What else? Did you brush your teeth? I will before I leave. What about your tongue? What about it? Just have to brush your tongue too, she said. You have to go all the way back with the toothbrush until you gag. Then why is it called a toothbrush? What? Shouldn't be called a tooth and tongue brush? Don't be such a wise ass, she said, smiling. Are you going to a movie? Yes. What movie? McKenna's Gold. Not a superb choice, but at least it's not a horror movie. You're planning to pay for her, right? Yes. How much money do you have? $12, I said. How did you manage to save that much? I stole it from your purse. What did I say about you being a wise ass? She jumped up again and walked over to her dresser. She pulled open the top left drawer and rum rummaged around. After a couple of seconds, she came out with a $20 bill and shoved it into my palm. Why are you being so nice to me? Because when you're grown up, you're going to think back to your first date. And you're going to remember it was on Memorial Day in 1969. I guarantee it. You're never going to forget the time or the place, Julian. But here's the thing. You're going to say to yourself, whenever you think back, Amelia came through for me. I know that doesn't make sense right now, but when you're grown up, trust me, it will. Now, let me give you a few more pointers. I'm not stupid. No, but you're passive. I'm not passive. You don't take charge. You let things happen. That's not true, I said. Isn't it? No, it isn't. You let Lonnie make too many of your decisions. He doesn't make any decisions. He got you suspended, he, she said. I don't know exactly what happened with that boy down the block, but I know it must have been Lonnie's doing. Everyone who knows you knows that, Julian, even if you don't admit it. I tried to stay calm. Lonnie does not make my decisions. The two of us just think alike. There's a big difference, Amelia. Look. I think it's fine that you and Lonnie are friends. You've known the kid for your entire life. And now he is the leader of the pack. I get that. But you have to be your own person. Even if the two of you think alike, you have to separate yourself. You have to go your own way. Figure out who you are without Lonnie around. You're just like dad. You hate the guy. I don't hate Lonnie. I'm sure he has good qualities, but he's also the kind of guy who'd pick on someone who can't defend himself. You have to face that fact. Dan Lee Dimmel can defend himself. You, have you ever seen him? He's slow, Julian. He goes to a special school. You and Lonnie both know that. Why are you always talking Lonnie down? I'm not talking him down. I'm talking you up. You're not a little kid anymore. You're going out on your first date tonight. Which Lonnie has nothing to do with. Good, she said, then take charge. She shrugged at me in a sarcastic way, as if she just made her point. I wanted to answer her, but the conversation was going downhill. That's par for the course with Amelia. You start talking about one thing and then... Without warning, you take a sudden turn into the Amelia zone and you're done. She means well. The proof was the $20 bill I was clutching in my palm. But you couldn't reason with her. Not once she got an idea in her head. She had a low opinion of Lonnie and nothing I said was going to change her mind. I turned and walked out of her room without another word. But then like a minute later, I was back in my room going over the conversation and I started to feel guilty. I glanced at the $20 bill, which was now folded in with the rest of the money on my desk. 
I thought about the fact that she hadn't razzed me, that she hadn't said a word to mom or dad. Then I thought about how she'd come through for me with the dying pigeon and how she always came through for me and how I'd walked out of her room just now without even a thank you. I walked back to her room and knocked on the door. You're welcome, she called out to me. Thank you, I said anyway. Just be yourself, Julian, except not at work. By 7.30, I was standing out in front of the RKO Keiths waiting for Jillian to show up. The sun was almost gone, but there was still a sliver of lights casting shadows along Northern Boulevard. Loud honking was coming from a big traffic jam at the intersection of Northern and Main Street. Half the cars were trying to turn left onto Main Street. The other half left onto Northern, but no one was giving an inch either way. I had a bad feeling in my gut, looking at the long line of people outside the theater waiting to buy tickets. What if McKenna's gold was sold out? I didn't have a backup plan. I started to count the people waiting out front and stopped when I got to 35, not even half the line because I suddenly realized that I had no way of knowing how many of them were there for McKenna's gold and how many for nightmare and wax. Most of the people looked high school age at least, maybe even college age. There were families too. A dad and mom and their three daughters were right at the front of the line. The oldest of the three daughters looked about my age, which made the feeling in my gut worse. Who did I think I was fooling? 12-year-old kids don't go out on dates on Friday nights. The only way they wind up at the movies on Friday nights is with their parents. That was when I was thinking when I heard Jillian call my name. I turned around in time to see her father drive off in a sleek red car. I saw him in the car before I saw her. He gave me a quick wave, just a back and forth swivel of his hand. I started to wave back, but stopped myself. It wasn't the kind of wave you're supposed to wave back at. I just nodded instead. Jillian rushed up to me and grabbed me by the hand. She had on a light blue dress and pink with pink and white flowers, which made me feel wrong because I had on jeans. Nice jeans, like Amelia said, but still jeans, not creased pants. If a girl puts on a flowery dress for a date, she deserves creased pants. Jillian didn't seem to mind. She squeezed my hand real hard, except then she said, let's not do this. That stunned me. Not do what? Do you want to go home? She smiled in a real sly smile. Let's not go to the movies. Why not? The line's too long. Plus, I've got a better idea. Unless you already bought the tickets. If you already bought the tickets, I don't mind going. I didn't buy the tickets yet. Then let's go to Adventurers Inn, she said. That stunned me a second time. Adventurers Inn? I want to ride the roller coaster. But it's like a mile away. Come on, we can walk it. I know we can walk it, but why would we? Come on, please. I gave the idea a couple of seconds of thought. From the sound of her voice, I knew she was going to be thinking about Adventurers Inn the entire time we were watching McKenna's Gold. Plus, I like to roller coaster as much as the next guy. So why not go with the flow? If going with the flow made me a twerp in Amelia's eyes, then I guess I was a twerp. All right, let's go to Adventurers Inn. Right, I'm gonna stop there. And I want you guys to tell me one thing that, uh, or one piece of advice that Amelia gave Julian about Lonnie. Mm -hmm. 